Whole Genome Sequencing and You. This video is about whole genome sequencing. We hope that it will help you understand what this technology is and what it can and cannot tell you. If you are deciding whether to have whole genome sequencing done, we hope this video will help you make your decision and help you decide what types of personal results, if any, you would like to receive from it. So, let's start at the beginning. In each of the trillions of cells that make up your body is your unique set of DNA. DNA carries all the information your body needs to function and makes you who you are. For example, how tall you are and what your hair color is. DNA is packaged up in 46 structures called chromosomes. Your complete set of DNA is called your genome. DNA is made out of four chemical bases called A, G, T, and C. These chemical bases, or letters, are the building blocks of DNA. The human genome is made up of about three billion pairs of these letters. When you stretch it out, it looks a little like this. The exact order of these letters is called your genome's sequence. Genes are specific important parts of this long length of letters. Humans have about 20,000 genes. Genes are important because they contain the instructions cells need to make proteins. Proteins do most of the work in your body, building and maintaining things like your muscles and organs, such as your heart. A change in a gene could lead to a change in a protein and this could affect your body. For example, it could affect how your heart functions. About 99% of the letters in our DNA sequence are actually the same in all people across the globe. The 1% that varies between you and your neighbor is important, though. Although it seems small, this difference influences lots of things, like what you look like and your risk of disease, heart disease, for example. Your genome is what makes you human, but your unique set of DNA variants are what make you, you. Whole genome sequencing is a technology that enables scientists to literally read the exact order or sequence of all the letters that make up your complete set of DNA, your genome. In order to do this, a blood or saliva sample is taken. The sample is sent off to a laboratory where a machine breaks up your DNA and reads the letters like a code. Researchers then compare your DNA sequence to a standardized reference sequence. They identify the variants or differences between the two sets of letters. They then interpret the code. The process of whole genome sequencing can lead to many different types of personal information being identified. It may reveal DNA variants or differences in your genome, your complete set of DNA, that are associated with physical traits, such as height, eye color, and skin color. Some variants in your genome can give clues to where your ancestors lived. For example, some variants are found most frequently in people whose ancestors lived in Asia. If you have these variants, then it's likely that you have distant ancestors who came from that part of the world. You may also find out some information about your risk of developing common diseases, which are caused by multiple genetic, environmental, and lifestyle factors. For example, you may have DNA variants that mean you have an increased risk of a disease like type 2 diabetes. Remember, though, that type 2 diabetes is also influenced by what you eat and how much you exercise. There is also the possibility of getting personal genetic information about your risk of developing a psychiatric disorder, like schizophrenia or Alzheimer's disease. Whole genome sequencing can also provide information about how you might respond to medications. Variants in your genome can influence whether or not a specific medication will work for you, as well as whether or not you might experience unpleasant side effects from that medication. 
This is called pharmacogenomics. It may also reveal information about genetic disorders. These are rare diseases caused by abnormal variants or mutations in a person's DNA. One example of a disease caused by a mutation in this way is Huntington's disease. In most cases, if you have one or more of these variants, you will already have the disease or will definitely develop it in the future. It could also reveal that you are a genetic carrier. This means that although you may be healthy, you have one copy of a DNA mutation in one of your genes that is disease-causing in people who have two copies. If your partner is also a carrier for the same mutation, then your children could be at increased risk of the disease. Sickle cell disease is inherited in this way. Finally, tens of thousands of other DNA variants will be identified. Although these all contribute to make you the unique person you are, scientists are currently unsure what role these variants play, if any, in health and disease. DNA variants in this category are sometimes called variants of unknown significance. Making your decision. If you are deciding whether to get whole genome sequencing done, it is important to know what types of results may be available to you. You will then need to weigh up the pros and cons and decide whether you would like to know all, some, or none of these results. The main potential benefit of having whole genome sequencing done is that DNA variants that have meaning for you personally may be identified, and you may have the option of getting these results. This might help direct you towards the right prevention, monitoring, or treatment for you. In addition, you may have the option of contributing your DNA anonymously to genomics research. By doing this, you could help make a big difference to what is known about the causes of disease. The main risks involve the possible social or emotional consequences of the information. There may be a loss of privacy, although the researchers will take precautions to prevent this. In some cases, a DNA mutation may be identified that indicates you will definitely get a severe disease that has no prevention or cure, such as Huntington's disease. In other cases, even if a DNA mutation that is associated with a rare genetic disorder is identified, how severe your symptoms will be may be unclear. It is also possible that you will be identified as having an increased risk of a disease like Alzheimer's disease, but not know, for certain, whether you will necessarily get it or not. The results could also have implications for your family members. All of these outcomes could lead you to feel a variety of emotions. It is also important to be aware of the limitations of whole genome sequencing at the present time. In general, knowing the complete DNA sequence of your genome does not, on its own, provide useful clinical information. The genomic data must be interpreted. This interpretation may provide some information about your health, but it also may not. This is because the science is still in its infancy. The first human genome sequence was only completed in the year 2003. Although the technology is improving each year, there is still much to be learned. In addition, interpreting a person's genome sequence is very complex and scientists are still working out things like how to use this information to estimate a person's disease risk. So whole genome sequencing may or may not have direct benefits to you. If you are considering getting whole genome sequencing done and receiving your results from it, it is important to remember that the decision is a personal and complex one. It is also completely voluntary and only done with written consent. If you do decide to get your results, these will be completely confidential, and it will be up to you to decide whether and to whom you wish to disclose them. So there you have it. Whole genome sequencing in a nutshell. We hope that you found this video informative 
and helpful if you are trying to make up your mind about getting your genome sequenced.